Hey folks, Josh here, and you might know me as the steward of Rugged Ridge Forest, where we craft wood-fired, organic, pure Vermont maple syrup. You can try some for yourself by heading on over to RuggedRidgeForest.com. A little while ago, I took you guys to the Fred Webster auction, where they were auctioning off a bunch of antique farm equipment. At that auction, I bought a pair of sickle bar mowers, McCormick Deerings, one was a giant, and the other one was an earlier model from around 1906. Between the two of them, I was able to cob together a working machine that involved building a new metal shaft, sharpening the sickles, swapping around some sections and knives, as well as lubricating the entire machine and breaking it all loose. Once I had a working machine, it was time to break the horses to it. Go on, bud. This is going to be a rather medium to long form video that's going to include a lot of the transitions and the steps included in the process. The reason for this is because a lot of y'all might have questions about how things actually go in practice and I just want to be able to show you guys how it goes the first time hooking a team to a new implement and the different things that might happen and what to do to avoid them and what to recognize when things are going well and what to recognize when things are going poorly. If you ever get bored, feel free to hop around the index. There I was just straightening out the lines. They were kind of snagged on an apparatus of the harness, and so I was unable to have really good tactile contact. And what a wonderful, trustworthy team where you can just reach up in between them and no fear of kicks, no fear of any nefarious actions. So I really got a pretty safe and trustworthy team, all told. This part right here is what I would think of as the sniff test. This is their first time meeting the sickle bar mower, and so I want to give them a chance to touch it, recognize that it's nothing to be afraid of, and I'm also going to have my girlfriend hold on to them while I play with the apparatus, put down the sickle bar, make it clank, make it move, all of this just to desensitize them to what they're going to be hooked to momentarily. When trying something new with your team, you can't underestimate the value of a second set of hands, especially somebody who's comfortable with your animals and is able to just kind of hold on to them while you're doing another thing. You know, to have two horses, 2,500 pounds of flesh with their own mind about them, it always helps to have a second set of hands so that you can do things right, do things slowly, and not be juggling dangerously while you're trying to do everything for the first time. Be very careful while handling your sickle bar, especially when raising and lowering it. The knives had a tendency to drop or slide along the bar, and if your fingers are in the wrong spot, uh, you might not be counting to 10 for much longer. Seem to take that pretty well. I'm actually going to have you hug them once I get them into their um, thing as well. Ready? And hop! Easy G. Hop! Back. 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 Back.
He'll be back. We hope. In there, hope. In there. He'll be back. Back. In there. You go back. You go back. In classic style, Hildy's being a little bit hesitant. She's wanting to get a little bit more sideways to the apparatus so she can have a better look at it. And Hugo's more concerned about all the good grass that he's stepping over in the process. Uh, he's just kind of along for the ride, whereas Hildy is expressing a little bit of concern about the situation around her. This is the most dangerous and nerve-wracking part of hitching up your team when you're connecting the pole to the neck yokes. It's just very concerning that if the horses were to spook and to run forward, you would not only be getting run over by the horses, but you'll be getting clotheslined by the steel neck yoke. And if you connect the cart to it, then you might be getting rammed by the pole as well. It's just very important that you have a really good relationship with your horses, that you trust each other, that they respect your space, and that they understand that you're there, and that when you're there, they don't have to worry, they're safe. Usually I don't need a second person to hook up a cart. However, since Hildy's express expressing a lot of trepidation about the sickle bar mower, I'd rather be safe than sorry. Yeah. And if I can just keep her held still and make sure that this is a positive experience and she doesn't spook, then she's gonna be less afraid of it than if she were to spook, it complicate this process and be dangerous. So an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure and setting your horses up for success and avoiding failure is the best way to have good outcomes. Uh, when you start doing things too quickly and accidents start to happen, the horses lose their trust in you and then things will go downhill very quickly. One thing that I like to do is to sit on the ends of my reins. This prevents the long ends of the lines from getting tangled in any of the gear. And it also means that if they're to drop out of my hands, I'll be able to find the ends of them. And as you can see, that was a pretty exciting start. I always like to start with a nice controlled walk, and as was evident, Hildy got a little bit nervous and was even doing a really uh, held back gallop. And so what I was doing was just applying pressure to the reins, trying to convey calm, telling the horses to go easily. But also once they took off, I asked them to stop and I made them stop. I'm trying very hard to get him to do a nice smooth walk here, but as you can see, they're very bouncy up and down and they're leaning a lot closer to the trot. And so I'm trying to apply pressure and remind them to walk when they get trotty and then release that pressure as soon as they start walking smoothly. You can see a lot of nervous behavior here, a lot of stammering, a lot of head shaking, and that up and down really high walk or slow trot uh, it's a lot of signs of anxiety that we're going to try to nullify through familiarity and repetition.
Hugo, being only four years old, will sometimes get a little spooky when he feels the uh, traces against his leg and will do a little buck kick. It's not desirable, but it's also not the end of the world as he's feeling out how to stand evenly in the traces. And so here we are, just trying to get some miles and hours with the cart behind him, get him familiar with it, slow him down, maybe tire them out a little, but the more experience they have with the sickle bar behind them and everything going smoothly, the better. And it's about here that I noticed that the majority of their stress is because the sickle bar is adjusted in such a way that it's clanking against the treads of the tires. When I took everything apart and put it back together, there's a lot of balancing and adjustments that needed to take place to get everything rolling smoothly and as it should. And in this upright position, the sickle bar is clanking against the wheel slightly, and that is contributing highly to the stress. It's sending a little shock wave down the pole that's bothering the horses. It's also sending irregular resistance to the horses. And so I'm recognizing now that that's part of the reason why they're a little bit high strung. But really, I'm trying to get them to get over it and to just be smooth and chill. And once they get to that point, then things are going to go a lot better. And this volume of starting and stopping is perfectly acceptable for a training session. You really want to get your horses stopping on a dime every time you say whoa, and also reinstilling that you really want them to only walk. This is an activity that is just walking. And the closer you can get to that through training, the more starts and stops that you do, the better. Here it's becoming very apparent the clanking that was agitating the horses. Stopping and standing is really the hardest and most important part about working with your horses. And once you can achieve that, the rest is just built on that foundation of calm, stopping, and trust. Here, I'm also making a conscientious effort to breathe deeply. The horses communicate through breath, and allowing them to hear you breathing deeply puts them at ease. They want to listen for your breath and in so doing, they calm down. Another very important concept is that if your horses are spooky, it's very important for you to remain calm and for you to move through the acts that are spooking them with that confidence and poise that can instill confidence in them, even if it takes a while to achieve. And after a few laps, the horses are finally calming down and demonstrating the calm and poise that I'm hoping to get out of them. So it took a little while and a lot of spook, but we're finally getting closer to where we want to be.
them off. Yeah. And it was a little loud on the back of that cart, but Emma did make a very astute observation that the bar of the sickle bar was clanking on the wheels. And so she kind of recognized it, maybe even before I did in the moment. But there's a lot of clanking and a lot of gears clicking on that new machine. And even I wasn't familiar with all the range of noises that it could make, even though I was recognizing that we were getting a little extra clack here and there. Hi team, I'm back here. Wow. Is that rubbing on the wheel? It is. I have to make some adjustments, but okay. it's not within the current realm of what's adjustable. Kelvin, it looks beautiful. She's doing the high steps. Well, I was <laughs> hoping she'd be able to come. Yeah. Easy and home. I'm just going to do it with that hanging out for now, so you can get out of the way. Stay tuned, hope. And it looks like now that clacking has subsided, the horses have reverted back into their perfect selves. I think the fact that the sickle bar is no longer towering over their peripherals behind them, and the fact that the cart's not clacking up a storm, they're at substantially more calm and peace. And uh, things started to go really smoothly after that. And so I was regretting, I guess, the fact that things weren't dialed in sooner, but it is good to work through all of that so that if things start to go wrong, or when the sickle bar is engaged and things do begin clacking, they're more acclimated to the range of noises and resistances that they might encounter. Here we are about to engage the wheel and give it a try. And to be honest, I think they're doing really well. Nice and smooth. There's a lot of additional resistance now that the sickle bar is being driven by their hoof falls, but they're pulling nicely. They don't seem agitated. They're going very smoothly and uh, they seem to have the hang of it. So even though we started off with a rocky start, I actually think that that paid dividends now to put them at more peace now that things are going smoothly. And this certainly isn't thick and lush hay to write home about. We're just kind of knocking the weeds out of their pastures here for a proof of concept. But I wanted a nice fenced-in area that they were familiar with to start them off with so that when we do try this in more complex situations, you know, we minimize the amount of variables we're introducing them to at any given time. Great. 
and I've mentioned this a few times in some of my other videos, but before I send my horses off, I like to use the cue ready to get them both paying attention simultaneously and then to get them to go. Likewise, before we stop, I like to say and and then whoa. And I'll also throw the word easy around quite a bit when I want to make sure that they're being nice and calm for a command. So I have a few little modifiers that I include in the repertoire of basic commands that I think helps my team to run more smoothly. Ready? As you can see, now that the team's got the hang of it, they're going really smoothly and everything's going really well. I know that it was a little bit disappointing that the added clicking and clanking early on in the training process made them a little bit more high strung. And maybe that was just a mistake that I could have edited out. However, I think it's more important to show you all that these things might happen. But the important thing to remember is that when the horse spooks, you do not spook. And that you maintain that quiet confidence and that good leadership so that they're able to work through adverse conditions and adverse situations. And it's not the end of the world that they were exposed to a time when the equipment was not set up perfectly so that if the equipment does fail, they'll understand that they can trust my judgment and that I will keep them safe and that I'll lead them into a safe situation. And so even though that was less than ideal, and even though a lot of people would say that I should have stopped and brought the sickle bar all the way back to the shop, I really wanted to make sure that we had a positive experience by the end of the day and that they didn't walk away from the sickle bar afraid of the clanking. And so um, we made on-the-fly assessments and we made changes to the program in order to see a successful outcome, and we got there. And so I, I hope you all have as much success on your own attempts, or maybe even more. In this video, the sickle bar was set up with a seven-foot bar, which is generally for two large draft horses, and it's a lot of friction, a lot of resistance, even if the thing weren't 120 years old. There's a lot of friction and resistance that can make things a lot harder. Um, the fact that the knives were dull, the knife guards were dull as well. Um, after this video, I shortened it down to a five-foot bar, which I got on the other sickle bar mower. And we also swapped the knives out for much sharper knives. And that led to a lot smoother and more successful outcomes in subsequent attempts. Or is it safer for us to bring it down to the shop? Because I didn't like it when it was clanking up against there. Mm -hmm. I could probably make those adjustments... Can you do it out here? I could probably make those adjustments up here. Yeah. Oh, good soon. And honey, if you want to uh, hold the camera, keep it rolling. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Where if it's going to get interesting, it's going to get interesting. You want me to have the work for them? No, I, I, I think I got it. I think they're safe. And it was a good training session. At the end of the session, they're standing while I adjust the sickle bar. They're smooth, they're even, and safe. I'm trusting them with my life right now. If they were to run off, I could catch my neck on one of those knife guards, and that wouldn't be pretty. But, you know, we trust each other, and we're keeping each other safe. And uh, even though there were some hiccups, as any training session will have, things ended on a tremendous win. Should have done that first. Just take it out of here. But thankfully, they didn't move a step. That's a good team of horses. Ho, oh, Hugo. I wonder if I bring this down. That's going to be safer for that assembly. You know what? I'm going to let's see if I can get it back down there with the horses. I think I can. So, I'm going to open the gate wide. Ready? G.
And here you can see that even with the clanking of the poorly adjusted sickle bar, they've still calmed down quite a bit. Here we are going down a hill. There are no brakes on the sickle bar mower and they're able to slow down the cart and control the cart all the way on the way down. So a lot of that uh, forwardness, bounciness, galloping and, and trotting out of cue early on in this session was a direct side effect of their anxiety with the whole situation. And now that they're thoroughly familiar with the situation, they're exponentially safer, even though the sickle bar still needs some adjustments to be perfectly smooth. And I already might have mentioned that, but these are really great team of horses. And I really trust them, and they're super sweet, super earnest, and they're able to handle everything I throw at them with dignity and grace. So I, I really appreciate these two, and they keep on impressing me day after day. Many would say that dropping your lines like this is a major faux pas, and they're absolutely right. This is a dangerous high trust move. The horses are still hooked up to the cart and the lines on the ground. As you can see, I'm grabbing the lines closer to the bit right now. But um, we have that level of trust. They're also a little bit tired, and uh, a tired horse is a good horse. And so uh, now that they've got the rhythm, they're ready to go back to the barn and get some grain. And every day is a winding road that brings us a little bit closer. And this next clip shows our horses two weeks later with a five foot bar, sharper knives, weaving in and out of a freshly planted apple orchard, knocking down some of the brush through there. And as you can see, I'm able to drive them with one hand. They start and stop on a dime and uh, now they got it. Ready? Thank you all so much for joining us on that little training session. And if you appreciate these videos and want to show your support, we'd really appreciate it if you could head on over to ruggedridgeforest.com and grab yourself some wood-fired, organic, pure Vermont maple syrup. We're a content creator's second and farmer's first, and so if you guys could support us by sweetening up your flapjacks, you know we'd love it. Thank you very much, and have a great day.